just a star of night that simply fades away the crest of a wave as it washes out to sea where does it lead to and who knows why the saddest melody is the sound of soft satin wind that leaves behind a chill the last autumn bud as it withers on a hill the distant drummer who tries to be loud the saddest melody is the sound of goodbye the saddest melody is the sound of goodbye. John, I'm so glad you're here. I wasn't sure if you'd be coming. I got here as fast as I could. Sometimes I feel sorry for your wife. I better get back to the hotel. Oh, no, not yet. Please stay a little longer. I'm going to be back for another two hours. Call a taxi for me, will you? Please. Marie. Sure been raining a lot lately. Seems like it's been raining for a week. We've only been here two days. Would you mind driving around a little bit? Never mind, just take me to the hotel. I have to call my wife. Tell me where the Ambassador Hotel is. I thought it was on this block or a block over. See, the cab left me off, and I don't recognize.
stand out in his brand, why not warm up a little, dry out? This way. from my hotel, the ambassador. I thought I was in the right neighborhood. I asked the cab to let me out. Yes, I know. What? I know what you mean. The rain is a deceiver, a veil over reality. Things don't look the same in the rain. In fact, it's quite easy to get lost in these streets. I do it all the time. So you lost your hotel, huh? Yeah. Maybe the hotel lost me. Anyway, I... I can't find it. Professional transient oil? I'm, uh... I'm here for the plumbers convention. Universal plumbers, national sales reps from all over. We come here several times a year to catch up, you know. You were out seeing the sights, were you? I was visiting a friend. A friend, eh? We all need friends now, don't we? Want some coffee? Uh, uh no, no thanks. Maybe I will have a little, if you don't mind. Coffee? Yeah. It's kind of cold out there in the rain. Grown men shouldn't be out walking around in the rain. Even to see friends. You live here? Live, work, this is where I do my work. What kind of work? I don't think you'd be interested, really. Just my work. Oh. Embalming, actually. Embalming and such. I'm a mortician. I take care of the deceased. After they're dead, I get them. That's my work. I do get some of the more interesting cases. In fact, the most interesting. Unique. Grotesque, actually. At least some of them. Come with me, I'd like to show you something. Back to the hotel. Oh, yes, the one you lost. Meeting another friend, perhaps? No, I just... Didn't... Oh, you must have a business meeting. A seminar on pipes and fitting. No. One thousand and one leaks you should know? I better get back to the hotel. I have to call my wife. <laughs> 
Well, I was kind enough to bring you in out of the rain, give you a hot cup of coffee. Why not stay just a few more minutes and let me show you around? I think you'll be interested. All right. Good. My latest clients. This one, for instance. So very interesting. Please, let's not be an ungrateful guest. I really should be going. I've just begun to show you around. There's much, much more. A very interesting, very bizarre. Her name was Miss Sibler. She was a teacher. Hi, Miss Sibler. Hi, Miss Sibler. Isn't she sweet, little brat? Stop running! Get away from my car!
Tony.
kind of a stupid prank is this? What is the matter with you? Don't you know any better? Stupid prank! More of you? What do you want? you select these people. Everyone should be selective in what they do, don't you agree? Take Mr. Grouski here, for instance. He was selective in what he did, though I must say he was uh, somewhat strange. He had a rather abnormal predilection for cameras, photography, and all that sort of thing. Did some very nasty things. like Billy still paid off. And it's running. This creep's got a camera. Here he comes. Here he is. is it true you killed six women, Mr. Grosky? This one is Julie. I met her at the library. She's good looking, but you know, she doesn't have too much upstairs. Hello? Hello? Oh, hi. Hi. Um, I was just about to leave. I thought maybe there wasn't anybody home. No, I'm home. I, I was just busy. Come on in. Good. Um, Thank you. Oh! Oh, it's so cute. What? Your apartment. Oh. I mean, it's really neat, and uh, it's so cute. I try to keep it clean. Sit down. Oh, not there. Uh, we're not here. Sit here. Okay. Um, I brought you some wine. I don't drink. Oh, uh, well, See, I don't really drink too much anyway, either, but I didn't know if you'd like any or not, so I mm -hmm. we... doesn't matter. <laughs> um, oh. Thank you. It was really nice of you to invite me for dinner. 
I mean, I don't usually accept blind dates. How come you filmed them? Oh, well, I'm, uh... <laughs> what are you interested in? Photography. Oh. Wow. Boy, that's, they're really great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, do you have an ashtray I could use? I don't smoke. Oh, um. Uh, photography. Well, I mean, of course. <laughs> There's one of your cameras right now. Um, uh, just like a, a model airplane or something, kind of mounted right on its own stand. A model airplane? It, it, it's, it's more important and expensive than any model airplane. It's, photography is a serious endeavor. Uh, hey, I didn't mean anything bad, really. See, I like to take snapshots too. I... This is a motion picture camera. You do not take snapshots with it or any other camera. Photography is not just a game. Um, Haley, I'm sorry. See, I just didn't know that I it was a I also study motion... magic. Magic? Mm -hmm. Would you like to see a magic trick? Sure. You would? Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. I would need a um, silk or a nylon... You wouldn't happen to have a nylon stocking, would you? Well, just the ones I'm wearing. I mean, I don't carry extras. <laughs> Darn it. I mean, I, I really need a, a silk stocking to do this trick. Um, could I borrow one of yours? I, I wouldn't ruin it or anything. You know, I, I mean, I, to do this trick, I really need a silk stocking. Um, how about another trick? No, oh, you would really like this trick. Well, see, um, actually, they're attached. You know, they're pantyhose. So you'd end up having to use that, both stockings anyway. That's all right. I mean, that, that'll, that'll work fine, even better. Um, uh, well, uh, I feel silly. <laughs> no, no, that's all right. Don't, don't worry about a thing. I'll turn my back and you can slip them off. Okay. Uh, now, you promise you're not going to look or anything? No, I won't look. On my honor. Um, all right, well, you know, I've, um, I've always been fascinated by, by magic because I always like to try to, to figure out how they do the trick, you know, what the secret is to it. And I've been to, to Vegas, you know, I go there, and I've seen some of the magicians there. And uh, it's, really, it's really interesting to me. But, I, you know, I haven't been there um, too recently. Uh, you aren't going to ruin them. Oh, promise. Okay. Okay. Now, this is a disappearing trick, a marvel of prestidigitation. I like that kind. You do? Yeah. Okay. You, you just look straight ahead. I'm going to figure out how you do it, too. Okay. Straight ahead. That's uh -huh. right. Towards the camera. <laughs> Right. Okay. Now this takes complete concentration to get the full effect. Now, you have to close your eyes. You cannot see this part. Um. All right. Um. Abra. Wait. Okay. Ka. Abra. <laughs> Life is gone. It's disappeared. I waited until now. I decided to skip all the boring formalities. Her name is Carol, and she's some sort of a secretary or something, you know? What did you do with the body? 
I buy all the photography books for myself. <laughs> and? Oh, look at that camera. Boy, does that look complicated. Look at all those switches and gadgets and buttons. <laughs> hey, that's funny. What? It sounds like it's buzzing or something, kind of whirring. Do you hear it? No, it's your imagination. No, listen. It's running, isn't it? No. <laughs> it's not. Yes, it is. It's running, isn't it? <laughs> no. Come on, what are you doing? Are you filming us? No, no. What kind of thing is that? Now, wait a minute. It's no, you wait a minute. I don't go for that kind of thing. <laughs> now, what did you think? You're going to get me drunk. We're going to get on the couch. <sighs> no way. I've known creeps like you. You are nuts. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> been three days, but I finally found another one. She's a real dandy. You know, society type, upper crust, very rich and snooty. Kind of got acquainted at the uh, Audubon Society. She's got the hots for me. I can tell. Probably because I, I bowled her over with my clever wit and uh, subtle sexuality. Anyway, she's she's coming to see me soon and, and I, I have to prepare and there, there's only about there's only about a hundred feet of film left so I'm going to have to work fast on this one. Mr. Grosky, I am afraid that I'm going to have to ask you if I may borrow your telephone to call a taxi. No! I, I mean, that won't be necessary, Mrs. Lundquist. I'm afraid it won't be. Don't call. You shouldn't call. Please don't call. Mr. Grasky, you have no reason to speak to me in that manner whatsoever. Mrs. Lundquist, um, please. didn't allow any pictures to be taken. Oh, he begged them. How do you know all about him? I mean, how did you find out the details of what he did and how? Well, I have uh, police records, doctor's files, that sort of thing. My disposal. I'm a professional. These are my customers. My clients. I have to know all about them to take care of them properly. Like this one. One of my favorites. Very intriguing situation.
from the top. First of all, Mr. Castellucci did not hang himself. He was murdered. I found a few small clipped hairs on his collar and the fresh scent of a tonic on his face and neck. A tonic which Mr. Castellucci doesn't happen to possess in his vast assortment of aftershaves and colognes. Now, this would uh, lead me to believe that Mr. Castellucci had recently obtained a haircut, and in my experience, it is very rare for a man to get a trim immediately prior to doing away with himself. I also found some vaguely distinguishable rope burns on his wrists and a few strands of that very rope on his coat sleeve, strongly suggesting that Mr. Castellucci had no control of the method of scheduling of his premature demise. Also found this airline ticket dated today in his coat pocket, scheduled to leave for Rome, Italy, by way of New York, departing uh, uh, a little less than seven minutes ago. I uh, strongly believe that the deceased really wouldn't have passed up the opportunity of a trip like that. Now, for the killer. His name is Savio Malinsky, a rather well-known, low-life type character, and the only man in this town vaguely degenerate enough to smoke a revolting brand of cigar known as El Amigo the ashes of which may be found in that dresser top or this table over here. He can usually be found at this time of day at a filthy little dive known as Frenchie's Pool Parlor at 6th and Franklin. Well, pick him up and book him. First degree murder. down now. He's had his hour in the public eye. Congratulations, an excellent piece of work. Oh, oh thank you, thank you. I rather thought so myself. Uh, it is not too difficult, really. A rather rude case, obvious clues, but it does keep the senses keen and the mind alert. It's something like a baseball player taking batting practice. <laughs> or a champion oarsman chopping about in a rowboat on a Sunday afternoon in the park. I don't believe I've had the pleasure. I don't believe you have. Inspector Wendell McDowell, Scotland Yard. Uh, England, right? Last time I checked, yes. Well, then you must be the... Famous Inspector McDowell, Britain's number one sleuth, isn't that what you call it? Uh, there have been people that have phrased it that way, yes. Well, in that case, you probably know that I am... Chief Detective Malcolm Tolliver, America's greatest detective and master of criminal investigation. You honor me, sir? <laughs> I respect you. I don't think I could ever honor you. <laughs> All right. We're supposed to be rivals, aren't we? Oh, <laughs> incorrigibly so. Well, how in the world did you ever uh, find me in this squalid uh, setting? I just asked at the station house, and your dispatcher, a nice chap, uh, Barney... Uh, Bernie. Bernie, that's right. Uh, he told me where I could find you. You mean you didn't deduce my whereabouts through calculated assemblage of relevant clues? No, this time I just stooped to plain old common sense and asked. I do that uh, quite often, actually. It's less dramatic, I suppose, but much more direct. Oh. Well, are you uh, visiting here in America, or are you on the track of some ruthless international lawbreaker? Oh, a bit of both, as a matter of fact, so I thought I may as well drop off and observe the master of detection at work, sort of um, absorb a few tricks. Oh, 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 Inspector, you are stretching your efforts in the art of flattery. Oh, hardly. 
Hardly. I honestly believe it couldn't hurt me to pick up a few pointers. After all, we are competing uh, for the title of world's leading criminologist. Yes, I believe someone did phrase it that way, didn't they? Uh, a journalist. Yes, I think it was Time magazine. Rolling Stone. No, I'm certain it was Time. A Rolling Stone. It was uh, January 7th, page 3, column 2, and the headline was in full capitals. Yes, yes. Well, uh, Mr. McDowell, Shall we adjourn these premises to a more pleasant environment? Yeah, I do have to dash off for an appointment right now, but perhaps later. We could have dinner together. You're two steps ahead of me. Brilliant deduction. <laughs> after you. Uh, after you. Oh, I insist. <laughs> well, all right. Do that. Analysis. Beaujolais, Les Bienvenus, um, 1968 or 69. No, definitely 69. Correct. You're very good at that. That's my job, being good at what I do, being the best. Well, we all try to be the best, Inspector. Uh, spirit of competition is what keeps us going, I suppose. Absolutely, sort of, uh, if at first you don't succeed, what? <laughs> uh, speaking of uh, success, or lack of it, <laughs> I I've always wanted to ask you uh, about that infamous mail train robbery. <laughs> How in the world did you ever crack that miserable fiasco after letting it drag on for all those weeks with no results. Yes, actually, you see, I uh, had it cracked, as you say, months before. I was simply waiting for my pigeons to move into position and implicate themselves with irrefutable evidence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, I, I couldn't run around naming names and allow them to uh, dig in with clever attorneys and uh, neatly constructed alibis. Uh, something like that appalling situation you yourself experienced on that unfortunate uh, jewel robbery investigation last year. Oh, wait, wait. Uh, that's not exactly right, Inspector. I had good reason to handle that case in an unorthodox manner. Really? And uh, is this unorthodox manner an American trait? Well, I suppose so. The Americans are uh, unorthodox, Japanese inscrutable, uh, Italians lusty, French passionate, British stuffy. <laughs> <laughs> stuffy but precise. A message for you, sir. Oh, thank you, Leon. Sir, I found it next to the reservation book. Your name was on it, so I assumed that... Uh... Oh, of course, of course. Uh, you didn't happen to see someone placing it there, did you? No, sir. I left to check the kitchen, and when I came back, I found it there. Uh, very good, Leon. Thank you. My pleasure, sir. Uh, something mysterious? Yeah. It's a note. Unsigned. A cryptic note. Ah, they're the best kind. Mr. Tolliver, in three days, someone you know will die a horrible death. 
you are the only one who can prevent this tragic occurrence. Don't you think you should? Now, it's written by pasting up uh, letters from newspaper headlines. That's a very amateurish trait. Hmm. It does uh, seem to get the message across, however. Elmer's glue, very middle class. Bremerton Paper Mills, New York. Uh, 20 pound flat bond, 80% uh, straight pulp, 15% dye, 5% nylon fiber. Common. A little too common, really. Now, this is going to take a bit of looking into. I, um, uh, I do have to return to London in a few days, uh, but I'd like to, uh, tag along on this case, sort of observe your methods. Would you, uh, would you mind terribly? Still attempting flattery, Inspector. <laughs> Not at all. I'm just, uh, immensely interested. Uh, you wouldn't feel threatened by my presence, would you? <laughs> Now you flatter yourself, Inspector. <laughs> you know, maybe there is only room for one foremost criminologist in the world. But being that one is not just a matter of methods. It's the man. The man and his methods. No, certainly I wouldn't feel threatened. Tag along if you like. I'd love to have you. Maybe you will learn something. Perhaps I will. Take a look at this, Inspector. The electrolysis test for hair construction identification? Not really. I prefer the magnetic analysis myself. It's considerably more accurate. Find anything? Nothing significant. No fingerprints on the envelope or the letter? No prints. Just mine and Leon's. Obviously, we are dealing with a professional. And uh, no convenient cigar ash or burnt rope's end to lead you to the identity of the fellow? Well, now, let's see. Uh, what have you got? You have the intended murder, and you know when. That's tomorrow. So uh, all you have to know now is uh, where and uh, how. And uh, possibly why, uh, just to jolly things along a little. What? Now, look, Inspector. You asked if you could observe, not participate. Now, if you want to speculate or theorize, why don't you get yourself into another room? and shout all your whens and your whats and your hows to your heart's content. Now, if you don't mind, I am trying to work, and I don't need all your amateur Dick Tracy suppositions and hypothetical poppycock rattling around this laboratory! <clears throat> well, uh, I tell you what, I, uh, I'll just sit over there and watch. Fine, Inspector, fine. You just do that. Thank you. 
yes. I, uh, I got your message just as I was leaving my hotel. Well, come in, come in. I'm glad I caught you. Yes, I, uh, I, I suppose I am, too. <laughs> um, my word. Your police department looks after you rather handsomely, doesn't it? Not at all like our poor, impoverished bobbies. Don't be deceived, Inspector. My salary on the force couldn't even begin to pay for this house. My good fortune results from the fact that I have the time and the resources to take on private cases. A private eye? Well, you can call me that if you wish. I prefer a private investigator. <laughs> and your uh, superiors have no objection? I have no superiors. Ah, oh, yes. Why don't you have yourself a seat? How gracious. I called you here because I have managed to solve the mysterious case of our threatening murderer. I thought you might be interested. Ah, yes, of course. This is the day, isn't it? <laughs> and I was beginning to think you were really stumped for once. Hardly. Although rather unique in its initial appearance, the case has actually turned out to be rather routine. Really? As you so uh, aptly put it uh, yesterday, the what is apparently murder, a horrible death, as it says in the note. The when is obviously today, three days after the note's delivery, and the victim of this unsavory piece of mayhem. As the note says, someone that I am supposed to know is, in fact, myself. Yes, me. Now for the perpetrator, the plotter, the instigator of this vicious scheme to commit cold-blooded, premeditated murder. After examining certain obvious elements, elements that reek of ego and pride and lust for power, I can only come to one conclusion. The case is solved. I am the victim. And you, my dear inspector, are the murderer. Bravo. Well done. An excellent piece of investigation. And the weapon, of course, a gun, the least likely weapon to be used by Britain's leading crime fighter. That's why no one could possibly suspect me of killing you. I forgot to tell you. I solved the case two days ago.
least I was thoughtful enough to change the inspector's bloody shirt. And I tried to keep the same expression on his face. A sort of clever little grin. I suppose you're going to tell me American detective Tolliver is in that coffin? Heavens, no. They never found enough of poor Chief Detective Tolliver to bury. He seemed to go all to pieces over the incident. Uh, come, let me show you this next one. Number four, I call him. He's one of my newest acquisitions. Acquisitions? There you go again, acting as if you pick and choose. I'm sorry. I shall call them my customers if it will make you feel any better. Let's have a look. What do you say? Here's the file on the new applicants, Mr. Cantwell. So what else do you want? If there's anything you don't find, please let me know. Testy little thing. Thanks, Susan. Hey, Dennis, how about grabbing some lunch? Uh, no, thanks, Dan. I... Come on, we're going down to that new hamburger joint. Uh, 23 different kinds of hamburgers? No, really, I, uh... I've got to run a few errands. I have to take care of a few things. Well, you're lost, Dan. 23 different kinds of hamburgers. Why do they keep pestering me? Stupid jerk. 23 different kinds of morons. Gotta get out of here. Ten, twenty, twenty-five, fifty, seventy-five, one buck. Uh, you have any gum? Huh? Gum? Sure, yeah. No. You really don't have any chewing gum? Well, you think this is a delicatessen? Slob. Hey, look, look, I don't have any change. Why don't you get a job? Creep. Somebody down there?
manager couldn't help you, why don't you get a job? No! But you have his body. Eventually, he died. Drunk with a rotted liver. Sprawled in the gutter. <laughs> Pickled, I'd say. But who would do that to a man? Torture him mentally and physically. And why would they do that? Who? Why? Oh, come now. I'm sure you're not that naive. All these people were the victims of their own frailties, their own petty foibles. And Sibler was selfish and cold and held a thoroughly uningratiating disdain for all people, especially children. And Mr. Grouski, our errant camera bug, was a bit sadistic and totally contemptuous of other people's privacy. And our two sleuths, so vain and egotistical. What that became of them? Mr. Caswell, he had no feelings at all. He was blindly insensitive, sir, when another human being agonized by his own pain, reached out for help. He passed him by. Poor Mr. Cantwell, he might have lived quite long and comfortably in another age, another world. His failing, he simply didn't care. was this person's thing? Oh, I don't know. Infidelity, I suppose. Like to see. This is all very interesting. Everything. But I must go now. Not yet. There's so much more to see. I have to get to the hotel. I have to call my wife. Don't rush off, Mr. Talmadge. How do you know my name? Every good businessman should know the names of his clients. <laughs> How long did you two think you could get away with your little game? 
and not stupid, you know. I can read Marie like a book. All it took was a little waiting, a little watching, and I knew I'd catch you both sooner or later. You stupid bastard. Don't you know any better? simply fades away the crest of a wave as it washes out to sea where does it lead to and who knows why the saddest melody is the sound of goodbye the end of a storm that leaves behind its tears the whole in a face as it changes through the years where does it lead to and who knows why the saddest melody is the sound of goodbye Turn to ashes, nothing's real anymore. The soft satin wind that leaves behind a chill, the last autumn bud as it withers on a hill, the distant drummer who tries to be loved, the saddest melody is the sound of goodbye. The saddest melody is the sound of 